Welcome to this podcast. My name is Paul. I'm in Beachhead in Scotland. Very pleased to be here. Today we're in Ezekiel chapter 38. I do so trust my family are well and that you're staying in prayer in the scripture, being thankful, uh, loving mercy, walking humbly, doing justly. <clears throat> you know, friends, um, God is the God of all encouragement, uh, the God of all compassions. Uh, God is benevolent and gracious and loving and faithful. God always keeps his promises, you know. It's a great thing to memorise the scriptures. You know, we do know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are called according to purpose. You know, God is faithful, who has called us into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. And faithful is he that calleth thee, who will also perform it. So it's a great thing, friends, to, to be in the scriptures, to be in the truth, uh, and be vigilant. Because our adversary, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion, seeking you know what? Um, yes, walking in the truth, thinking the truth, speaking the truth, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from the with humility and reverence and Adonai, you have our Elohim, his honour, life, and riches. God is faithful into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Very important, friends, to stay in the truth. Uh, can someone engage in a little bit of sport, a little bit of fiction, and still be a Bible-believing Christian agreeable to God? Yes. The problem is the human condition is one of imbalance, distortion distorted perspectives it's very uh, subtle how persons can go away from god and the truth and the light and, and get, get into idolatry vigilant friend the entrance Right, today we are in Eagle 38. Um, I so hope my listeners enjoyed the last podcast relating to what's transpiring at the prayer. Uh, know this, that God is the God of Israel, the Lord God of Abraham, the Lord God of Jacob, the Lord God of Israel. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, uh, the Lord God Almighty reigns. Uh, great is Yah, Yahovah, and greatly to be praised. Faithful, righteous, and sovereign is Yah Elohim, friends. Your Elohim is very, very great, very, very gracious. Yah Elohim is sovereign. Yah Elohim is over all, through all, and in all. Your Elohim is very, very great, friends. So this chapter, Ezekiel 38, friends, uh, it's a very, very powerful chapter containing great doctrine. Uh, many persons attach it to what's known as Armageddon, the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, many persons see it speaking of Russia uh, and of Turkey and of uh, Iran. Many persons see it as relating to the present times we live in. And of course, uh, on the previous podcast, friends, I attempted to give a uh, a clear explanation of what's going on <clears throat> in the south of Israel at the present time, where God, uh, through Israel, uh, is flushing out the rats that are hiding underground um, in the south of Israel. Now, um, Ezekiel 38. So it's a very powerful chapter, um, and what we'll do is we'll get straight into it. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks into your jaws and I will bring you forth and all your army 
horses, and horsemen, all of them thoroughly equipped. A great assemblage with targets and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Cush, and Foot with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gorma, his man, The house of from the autumn. Many peoples with thee, for thou all thine assemblage, assemble them to. After many days. To the land and gathered on the mountain, will waste. Yes, we seem to be having internet issues, friends. Um, be thy prepared, Ezekiel 38, 7, and prepare for yourself, you, and all your assemblage that are assembled to you, and be thou a guard to them. After many days you shall be visited. At the end of years you shall come into the land brought back from the sword, and gathered out of many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which have been a perpetual waste. But it is brought forth out from the peoples, and they shall all of them be dwelling in safety. You shall ascend and you shall come like a storm. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many peoples with thee. Thus saith Adonai, Yehovah, the Lord Jehovah. It shall even come to pass in that day that things shall come into your mind, and you shall think an evil You shall say, I will I'll come all of them dwells and having spoil and to turn thy hand against the place, place and against the people who gathered out of the well in the middle. And the man with all all you to thee to spoil to take up To seize a spoil and to take a prey and to turn your hand against the waste places that are now inhabited and against the peoples gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the middle of the land. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say to thee, Are you come to seize a spoil? Have you gathered your assemblage to take a, take a prey? To carry away silver and gold, to take cattle and goods to seize a great spoil? Therefore prophesy to the man and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, Adonai Yehovah. In that day when my people Yisrael dwells in safety, shall you not know it? And you shall come from your place out of the uttermost north, thou and many peoples with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great assemblage and a mighty army. You shall come up against my people Yisrael as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be at the end of days and I'll bring thee against my land that the nations may know me when I shall be hallowed in the O God before their eyes thus saith Adonai Yehovah are you not he of whom I've spoken in all time through my servants the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring thee against them 
And it shall come to pass in that day, in the day when Gog shall come against the land of Yisrael, saith Adonai Yahovah, that my fury shall come up in my face. It shall come to pass in that day, in the day when Gog shall come against the land of Yisrael, saith Adonai Yahovah, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy, in the fire of my wrath, have I spoken. Verily in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Yisrael. In my jealousy, in the fire of my wrath, have I spoken. Verily in that day there'll be a great shaking in the land of Yisrael, so that the fish of the sea, the fowl of the heavens, the beasts of the field, and all creeping things which creep upon the earth and all amongst the earth shake at my all mankind that are and the man shall be thrown down in the all shall fall. I will call for a source to him from the mountains, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. I will enter judgment with him and with blood. blood. I will enter with pestilence and with blood upon his bands and upon the many people. In rain and grave and brimstone. Sanctify my Of many Jehovah, if I must, and in a no, ah, yeah, well, friends are very rich, so is it EQ? Yeah, so this portion of scripture is widely thought to be a prophecy of nations like Iran, Russia and Turkey and others attacking Israel at the Battle of Armageddon. That's what this chapter is widely thought to speak of. And you can see there the Prince of Rosh. Well, Rosh is an ancient word for Russia. Rosh, Meshach and Tubal would be the regions of Russia. And as we know, there's many nations on the outskirts of Russia that made up the until recently the United uh, the Soviet Republic, the USSR. Um, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, I'm against you, O Gog, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. So they are now mainly uh, communist lands, but there is also a lot of Mohammedan lands. You might remember, friends, that a few days ago, a lot of wicked Muslims in a place called Dagestan, which is a region of Russia, um, they, hundreds of them uh, stampeded into an airport because they knew an aeroplane from Israel was arriving. They surrounded the aeroplane on the runway, they burst onto the runway, and then they forced everyone on board to identify themselves and show their passports, who they were and where they were from. And there were some incidents of violence, but it's all being kept hush-hush. Uh, but that's a real event, a very wicked thing to think of. And there's been lots of other examples of Jewish hatred and attacks and things like this in the recent weeks. 
Well, it's all stirred up by the doom divile, you see. The divine come down to the earth having great fury. But the then cast the bottomless anguish, anguish of every human for a thousand years. And then he'll be released for a short, very short time and then cast alive into the lake of sulfur and brimstone. And there he'll be punished eternally in the same way. So the religious idea that the devils torment human beings in hell is not right. The devils themselves will be tormented forever. Uh, the, the very wickednesses of mortals and the sufferings of mortals will be what will punish the wicked ones throughout eternity. The smoke of their torment will ascend night and day forever before Yahavar Elohim, before the Lord Jesus Christ. So these nations, Magog, Rosh, Meshach, Tubal, Persia, Kush and Fut, are inhabited by communists and Muslims uh, at the present time. But of course, in those days, 2700 years ago, in the time of this prophecy, Mohammedanism hadn't even become a thing. It was only uh, in around AD 700 that Islam, Mohammedanism came about. Um, and in the same way, communism hadn't come about either. But at the present time, these regions are communist and Mohammedan nations. Uh, and of course, uh, many communists and many Mohammedans, in fact, the majority of communists and Mohammedans, Muslims, they, they dislike and many of them hate the Jews. You see, that's just the reality of it. So this is widely thought to be a prophecy against the devil who through darkness and delusion has had some influence over the inhabitants of, of Russia, Turkey and the Mohammedan lands who are deluded as to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're deluded as to the sovereign power, the great wisdom, the great authority of Jehovah Elohim. And they don't understand that each mortal is a creature possession, doubly owned by the risen Christ God. So you see all these persons... Uh, all these persons are deluded, which is why it is written, the devil has deceived the whole habitable world. Only through prayer and obedience and holiness and the spirit of God, the blood of Jesus, uh, devotion to scripture, obedience to the faith, can a man or a woman be largely clear of delusion. So what we're really looking at here is God addressing the doomed, deluded devil um, and also the human beings that are deceived by him, which is every Mohammedan and most communists at the present time. So God says to them, I'll turn you back and put hooks into your jaws. Um, and often in scripture, you have this... Uh, description of human beings as being a whenever you see a sea see a soul to see a man you've got each person able to be human you see are all subject God subject every king Every evil must, every confesses lordship. So it's the sovereignty of God. And so we see a very mighty equipped army um, coming from this amalgamation of nations. At the, the present time, of course, with the incidents in the south of Israel, we've seen an amalgamation of nations. Once again, friends, we've seen Russia, Iran, Syria, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, Pakistan, and other Muslim and communist nations coming together 
against Israel. Um, so in this verse here, it tells us that lots of soldiers, uh, thoroughly equipped, many of them, will come. And from Persia, and Persia is, of course, modern-day Iran, Cush and Foot is thought to be nations in Africa. Many persons think Cush is Ethiopia. Goma and Togoma are from the uttermost north. So it's basically hundreds of thousands of soldiers from, from communist and Mohammedan lands that attack Israel. Of course, the, the preposterous thing, friends, is that this has all been written uh, for 2,700 years. Yet in all that time, the, the Muslim nations and the Muslim scholars have not figured out that they're deceived um, and uh, that they are pawns and that they're being used by the devil to hate on to hate the Jews and to attack the Jews and that what's prophesied is that uh, millions of them will be destroyed. You know, and yet they're still going ahead with their wicked plans, even though God has declared it and fully told out these realities 2,700 years ago. It's quite preposterous. And you think of it, but that's how deluded mortals are. And then if you think of nations, I mean, if you think of modern governments, I don't know how many of my listeners are familiar with the, with the workings of modern governments. But let me tell you something, friends. Modern governments pride themselves on being very articulate and in the know and very prepared. You know, they, they have these think, what they call think tanks and groups and NGOs and meetings to discuss this that and the other and they think they're very prepared and very knowledgeable but the governments don't realize uh, that nations are just like drops in a bucket to god the lord god omnipotent rules the whole planet not mortals not devils mortals and devils hide from elohim yahovah elohim yahovah doth not hide from mortals and devils Nations are like drops in a bucket. Mortals like grasshoppers. So for all these thousands of years, this truth here about uh, deluded mortals attacking Israel has been written. And yet to this very, very day and on, this very nation has Select people, yes, sure. He's so the is of God. When you say the Jews, the tribe, so the Yahudim, the Jews, yes, um, Yahoo is of course the name of your Creator. Um, so, so we see here the sovereignty of God over these human beings in the realms of Russia and Iran, and Turkey, um, and parts of Africa. And we see God promising that he will send them against Israel to their destruction. Um, now, in, we have a series of, I think it's 80, 83 podcasts, I think, on the entire book of Jeremiah on this channel, friends. And chapters 46 through to 51, uh, six chapters, are declarations of God's dealings and sovereign operations towards the enemies of Israel, Babylon, uh, Egypt, and other nations round about. And um, so you could go and read those and listen to those if you so wish, friends, Jeremiah 46 through 51. And um, so it tells you that the sovereign dealings of God, uh, most of Jeremiah has to do with God's dealings with the, with the Yahudim, with the Jews. But those uh, six chapters at the end of Jeremiah is God's dealings with the enemies of the Jews, you see. 
So these nations, they don't serve Elohim Yahweh. They don't honor the blood atonement. They don't honor the finished work of Christ Jesus. They don't have faith and trust in the resurrection. They're not Bible-believing Christians. As I say, they are Mohammedans and communists. They're most communists are atheists. So what we see with an amalgamation of communists and Mohammedans, i.e. Russia and Iran, uh, and China, incidentally, which is an atheist communist uh, nation, uh, we see that they don't believe or announce the creator. In fact, on the contrary, they, uh, you know, communists don't acknowledge a creator. You know, on the contrary, they deny there is a creator. The Mohammedans deny the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, if anyone doesn't have the Son, they don't have the Father either. You can't have the Father without the Son. If you went to a man's house and completely ignored his son, you wouldn't be in his house very long. Well, that's how it is on the planet. If you don't honour the son, you don't honour the father. If you don't honour the father, you're lost. Now, God says, I'll turn your back, put hooks in your jaws. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself thou and your assemblage that are assembled to you, and be thou a God to them. Very, very interesting. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself thou. So that's personal preparation, and your circumstance and things around you. It reminds me of the word to Hezekiah, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Now, of course, Hezekiah prayed and humbled himself and God had mercy upon him and gave him another, another 14, 15 years of life and showed him by turning the dial back on the clock. You can read of that in, uh, in Kings. By humility and reverence of the Lord is honour, life, and riches. After many days, at the end of years, you will come into the land brought back from the sword and gathered out of many peoples upon the mountains which have been in a perpetual waste. But it's brought forth out from the peoples, they shall all of them be dwelling in safety. So it does very much speak what's happened recently. Uh, it's been a microcosm of that. On the 7th of October, when the wicked Muslim fanatics invaded and butchered 1,400 human beings in the south of Israel, um, it's very much, and of course the word Hamas literally means violence. Um, and all those persons in the south of Israel were dwelling in safety. It says here, you shall ascend and will come like a storm, you'll be like a cloud to cover the land, many peoples with you. Thus says Adonai Yehovah, it will even come to pass in that day that things will come into your mind and you'll think an evil thought. I'll go to the land of unwalled villages, come to those that are in quiet, that dwell in safety, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. To seize a spoil, take a prey, turn your hand against the waste places, that are now inhabited and against a people gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the middle of the land. Prophesy, son of man, and say unto Gog, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, in the day they dwell in sin. And you should your to all of them and a mighty army. 
my land. Hallowed in the yog. in the eyes of men. Spirit of the Blue King. <laughs> 